You're watching the Marathon Conference kickoff. On a rainy night in the Derby City, we welcome you inside Cardinal Stadium for the season opener here in 2020. Out of the ACC, the Louisville Cardinals squaring off against in-state rival Western Kentucky out of Conference USA. Great to have you with us tonight as we welcome you to ACC Network Football presented by Geico. And it's a different version of the Atlantic Coast Conference here in 2020. No divisions this season. Ten conference games will be played. And welcome to the ACC Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish, already victorious earlier today against the Duke Blue Devils. And the Cards taking to the field for the first time this season. It's been a long wait with Tim Hassel back here at Wood. I am Roy Philpott. Mikhail Cunningham, Tim, will lead the charge once again for this potent Louisville offense. And there's no question that he's one of the most exciting quarterbacks in the ACC. Just a tremendous runner, but also a better than advertised passer. And, and he's really what makes this exciting offense that Louisville has. It makes him go. You think about accounting for 28 touchdowns last year with just five interceptions. He's got all kinds of weapons at his disposal tonight. The triplets, they call him. Mikhail, Javian Hawkins, the running back, and Tutu Atwell, perhaps my favorite name in college football. All he did a year ago was lead the ACC in virtually every significant receiving category. His favorite name, but he's also, I think, maybe your favorite player. Speed to burn in the slot for head coach Scott Satterfield. Meanwhile, for Western Kentucky, a transfer quarterback leads the charge. Tyrell Pigram will get the start tonight. And he's a very interesting player, a tremendous runner, and I think really could cause problems for this Louisville defense. They may use him as a design runner. They may use him just as a scrambler, but that's what makes him special, his ability to tuck it and run. And I think it's going to be interesting to see how Western decides to use him. The Hilltoppers also have one of the top defensive ends in the nation. Preseason defensive player of the year in Conference USA, D'Angelo Malone at a robust 228 pounds. Yeah, it doesn't matter that he's 228 because he plays much bigger than that. He can flat out rush the passer. And when you put these two guys together, you're talking about 18 and a half sacks. They can rush the quarterback, play on the other side of the line of scrimmage, and better run defenders than I think they've been given credit for. And Eric Wood, this Louisville offensive line has their work cut out for it this evening, don't they? Starters at tackle tonight and Renardo Brown and Adonis Boone and they have their hands full with these two defensive ends for Western Kentucky. This will be a great matchup to chart throughout the night because if anything's going to slow down this high powered Cardinals offense it could be those two guys on the edge. A little rain never bothered anybody. He went down on the sideline not even donning the rain gear to start this one off. Then. I mean that's a tough offensive lineman right there to keep the sport coat on in the rain. Scott Satterfield, ACC Coach of the Year a season ago. A six-win improvement from 2018 to 2019, including a comeback win against Mississippi State in the Music City Bowl. 12,000 socially distanced fans allowed here tonight as Western Kentucky won the coin toss and deferred. And the cards will have possession first at the 25. So here comes Mikhail Cunningham, redshirt junior from Montgomery, Alabama. Took over for Jawan Pass last year, about four games in. Impressive against these Hilltoppers in the matchup down in Nashville a year ago as well, Tim. He really was and he's an excellent deep ball thrower something that Scott Satterfield pointed out it was a bit of a surprise to him is how accurate he was on shots down the field they certainly did it a year ago. Great to have you with us tonight there were many times this summer we didn't think this would be possible when you know it it is and the early carry goes to JV and Hawkins with a flag on the field. Kyle Bailey with the stop will check the penalty. And we've seen a lot of that so far in college football. You called the UAB Miami game Thursday night. Early penalties. Oh. 
and pre-snap penalties on Thursday night in the UAB Miami game and you know I think that those are the things that drive coaches crazy also holding on run plays also in something that drives you crazy especially as an offensive line coach Cole Bentley the guilty party our referee tonight Jeff Flanagan so instead of a gain of two on first down it'll be first and 20 after the infraction Cunningham off the back foot rockets a pass incomplete far side looking for Fitzpatrick to bring up second and long you know it's tricky you know in these situations you know we've kind of had this abbreviated training camp for so many of these teams it's raining tonight the nerves you talk about the emotions of being like hey here we are we're playing a college football game and all of a sudden you get behind the down and distance to start off the game on second down rain starting to let up just a bit here's Hawkins again bottled up quickly for a gain of one, maybe two, it'll bring up third down. Kyle Bailey is second to tackle. Now Western Kentucky, Tim, a senior-laden program. 27 seniors this year for a program that claimed nine wins last year under second-year head coach now Tyson Helton. Yeah, and Coach Helton talked a lot about the senior class and, you know, their excitement level to get to this point and have this season and find out what this team can be. Hawkins motions out on third and long. And design quarterback run. Nowhere to go. We ran out of real estate in a hurry. No gain on the play. And that'll bring up fourth down. An impressive stop for the Hilltoppers. Yeah, Eli Brown just playing downhill. It is a quarterback sweep, designed run. And Eli Brown against that zone blocking scheme. Everyone just moving to their left is able to just find a hole and kind of penetrate, make the tackle, and send a message early on to Mikhail Cunningham. Dayton Wade. Back deep. And the punter lost the handle. The ball's loose on the goal line. A mistake for the cards, and that'll set up Western Kentucky inside the one-yard line. Now Lugan Lupo could not find a way to corral the snap, lost the handle. And Amari Alexander with the recovery for the Hilltoppers. Really, we mentioned the rain, but nothing wrong with the snap. He just doesn't corral it and then can't pick it up. I mean, there's really no reason for it, just drops it. You know, Scott Satterfield did say to us that his biggest concern about his football team coming into this game was the, the kicking game. I don't think he was referring to not being able to trust his punter to catch the snap. Marquez Trotter got back there for WKU. Make sure the punt is unable to get off. What a break for the Hilltoppers. Pickram steps on the field for the first time in a Western Kentucky uniform. Flanked by Gage Walker, who gets the handoff left side. Did he get there? He did. Touchdown, Hilltoppers. What a start for Tyson Helton's club on the road against an in-state rival. And this is exactly the break you're looking for. The best field position you could possibly get, just zone. Zone, you know, run, they don't block it well, but just way too much power out of Gage Walker, who's had a very productive career, you know, over 1,200 yards a year ago, and just too much strength, he's able to carry the defender into the end zone. Braden Narvison on for the extra point attempt for Western Kentucky. And the Hilltoppers with a strong start on the road. Our new score, 12.53 to go in the first quarter. Western Kentucky with an early touchdown. But nothing Western Kentucky leading Louisville here inside Cardinal Stadium. Tim Hasselbeck, Roy Philpott, Eric Wood. Great to have you with us tonight. An early mistake. Louisville special teams. Could easily end up, could end up on come on man this week. You don't want to be on command. No, man. but I'm just, but it, there's a pretty good shot that ends up on <laughs> command, man. Let's be honest, Roy. 
did see the Cardinals utilizing the wet ball drill. So bring it out five yards deep. Hassan Hall stacked up, driven backwards to the five. And a terrible decision by Hall. He's three yards deep in the end zone. There was a hesitation there. And that's one of the things you have to do as a returner, just be decisive. If you are going to go, you certainly can't hesitate. One of the special teams miscues. We saw it up in Ames, Iowa earlier today. Louisiana, the upset against the Cyclones, had one kickoff return for a score, another punt return for a touchdown. That's all you need. Yeah, I think we focus so much, you know, just offense and defense and the expectations and practice. But, you know, you can scrimmage practice, offense, defense. It's very hard to go live special teams in a training camp. Smith in motion out of the option look and Cunningham over the right side for a gain of three, maybe four. It'll be second down and six. Hawkins stacked up again. He's going to lose a couple of yards. It'll bring up third down and long for Louisville after a loss of four. This Western Kentucky front is just, you know, playing on the other side of the line of scrimmage, you know, getting the penetration. And Kyle Bailey, who had over 100 tackles a year ago, is already showing up big. Leading tackler for the Hilltoppers last year. Four stops already tonight on just two possessions. Cunningham out of the shotgun again. Wants to heave one deep. Has a man. Caught. Smith has it. Braden Smith, the sophomore. And just like that, the card's in business. That's yeah. a gain of 61. And it's a gain of 61 because it's an outstanding read by Mikhail Cunningham. Basically, they're going to run almost a double post look. He's going to pull the safety to the bottom of your screen, which just basically creates a middle of the field wide open. And then it's just an outstanding throw to Braden Smith. After the big gainer, Fitzpatrick in motion. Play action again for Cunningham. Wide open for the easy touchdown. Pfeiffer out of the backfield. Big number 14, the transfer from Vanderbilt. Reaches Pater. It's another nice play design. Play action, slide concept. Fitzpatrick underneath. That draws the defender down. And then Pfeiffer just runs the, cor the corner behind it. And listen, Mikhail Cunningham should be excited after the way that first drive went. Great response by the Louisville offense. A quick strike attack of the cards. Pfeiffer had two scores a year ago, his first this season, and just like that, we're tied at seven, just underway here in the Derby City. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance, and in part by Marathon, fueling the American spirit. Look inside the Ali Center. Interactive museum, educational programming, special events there. Honoring one of the all-time greats. Quick strike offense of Louisville in action there on that last possession. And what about the turnaround under Scott Satterfield, Tim, coming over from Appalachian State. A six-win improvement in just one season, exceeding a lot of folks' expectations in these parts. Yeah, and I think probably more importantly than the wins and losses and the change in the statistics is that this football team all of a sudden had confidence. You know, I think they believed in what Scott Satterfield was trying to do and the program that he was going to try to build here. And I think that was a big part of the quick turnaround is just the trust between the coaching staff and players that they had a coach that believed in them. Our second look, Tyrell Pigram, a.k.a. Piggy T, which is his nickname. 
coming over from the Maryland Terrapins. I would say that's a pretty good decision given the state of the Big Ten right now. Of course, that may be up in the air, but 5'10", 2'10". He's a dual threat out there tonight. He's a dual threat. We enjoyed talking to him. Uh, you know, he's one of these guys that I think is just a football player, and he's always dangerous with the ball in his hands. Flanked by Gage Walker, second carry. This time, no real estate. And he's going to lose a yard. Rajay Burns had a big turnover last year in this contest. And, the Rajay, stop. and Rajay Burns came flying off the edge there, and I believe that was his own read. So a little bit surprised that Pigram didn't keep that. If we see it again, it could be a situation where the quarterback ends up as the runner. Second down and long. Light drizzle here in the Louisville area. Inside give and a quality pickup. Bring up third down and short after a gain of nine. Burns another tackle. An important play coming up for the Hilltoppers as Gage Walker checks out. And you see, this is this is well blocked. Veteran offensive line group for Western Kentucky. And Gage Walker. Hits the hole hard. This offensive line was eager to get this season to happen, have a chance to play with each other. And certainly a good start for them up front. Malik Staples checks in for the first time. And off the zone read, plunges ahead, should have the first down, and he does. And again, it's good movement by the guys up front. And one of the things that we, we kind of learned from talking to Tyson Helton was basically, you know, a year ago, the offensive line did not match up well, did not play well in this game. And, you know, I think these guys took it as a challenge to have a better outing. You just never know what to expect that first game as well. All kinds of surprises. And especially in a year like this. Seen upsets across the country today. Mentioned Louisiana beating Iowa State. Arkansas State toppled Kansas State. Not a good look for the Big 12. And a timeout called as the play clock was running down. Western Kentucky. First charge timeout. Six minutes in. Here in Louisville, we're tied at seven. Well, coming up next Saturday, another college football triple header right here on ACC Network. Up first at noon, Syracuse tangles with Pittsburgh. The number one Clemson with its home opener against the Citadel. 8 o'clock, it's our ACC Network primetime matchup presented by Geico with Wake Forest and NC State. And of course, tonight, Clemson and Wake Forest over on ABC as the Tigers and Demon Deacons with game day in the house getting together for the first time this year. Pigram lost the snap and gets tackled immediately. That could be an issue all night long. Yaya Diaby. Yeah, just it's an opportunity here. The ball is kind of a little hot and a little high, but that's one you would think that Pigram would be able to handle and, and corral in there. You almost have to wonder. It was raining earlier, Roy, as you pointed out, if some of the football still a little bit slick. It's a loss of five yards, second down and 15. Western Kentucky has yet to attempt a pass. It was halfway through the first. Pigram and Piggy T with a nice run. It'll bring up third down and manageable for the Hilltoppers after a gain of 10. Yeah, and this is how I think that Western Kentucky is going to use Pigram. This is the design quarterback draw. And then just look at the way his speed outruns the angle of Isaiah Hayes. I mean, that's really I think, what Pigram is best at doing, these design runs where you get an advantage on the number count because the quarterback's the ball carrier. Third and a long four. To the air for the first time and incomplete. So the Louisville defense holds. Looking for Jacor Pearson. 
And it almost looked like it was a miscommunication, not just an errant throw. If it was an errant throw, he badly missed him. But Pearson looking like he was going to run a slant. And you see the conversation happen on the sidelines. Typically when that happens is the receiver saw it one way and the quarterback saw it another. Blake Staples drifts back to receive this John Haggerty punt. The Aussie is the preseason special teams player of the year in Conference USA. And he'll turn that punt over beautifully as Staples calls for the fair catch at the 11 yard line as we check in once again with Eric Wood. During this very serious time in our country, the ACC football is taking COVID-19 very serious. They are testing the players three times a week and everybody else in the building. One test the day before a game, another within 48 hours after the game. One positive test requires 10 days of isolation, and those identified through contact tracing must be quarantined for 14 days. They are very serious about getting this season off without a hitch, and they do not want COVID-19 to spread rampantly. And Eric, I'll tell you this, leadership starts from the very top and works its way down. Commissioner John Swafford has done an outstanding job as Tutu Atwell with his first touch of the season. Barrels out of bounds just short of the 20-yard line. You mentioned the leadership. Obviously, the conference has done a tremendous job of you know, putting a process in place and, and, you know, and, and a guidelines for the schools because all we heard about was from the players, hey, we want to play, we want to be safe. And I think the fact that we're here in the stadium watching a football game is a testament to how hard they've worked at it. Hassan Hall wearing number 10 for the Bill. Picks up the first down, charging ahead to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of six as the drive continues. You see Hawkins, he just runs so hard. He was described to us as a walking muscle by offensive line coach and offensive coordinator Dwayne Ledford. You know, he's, he's under 200 pounds, but he runs like he's over 200 pounds. Still has a ton of speed, but much more power than you would expect. Uh, Hawkins not hauling that last carry, obviously. Here's another deep ball, and that one launched well past the intended target. As Justin Marshall was in the area. Marshall's a guy that they feel like can be that contest contested catch wide receiver there. He's actually on top of the defense and another one of those kind of miscommunication situations. You could see Cunningham thinking that he's going more to the post as Marshall stayed more vertical. And a great fall camp did Marshall. And off to Hawkins on second down. Barber and Darvin combine to make the stop. It'll bring up third and ten. So an interesting start here in this opener for both Louisville and Western Kentucky. The only out of conference game will be played by the Cards this year. The series has started way back in 1922. And now a timeout called by the Hilltoppers, their second. Timeout. Western Kentucky, second charge timeout. Now the schedule for the cards this year has changed timeout. around quite a bit be 30 seconds. since what we first thought it would be way back in the winter. How about Miami coming to town next week for an ABC tilted? That's going to be a big one. It'll be a big one. <laughs> Talk about exciting quarterbacks in that football game. I saw Derek King on Thursday night and what an addition to an already talented group of quarterbacks in the ACC. And you, know, you talk about electric offenses, dynamic quarterbacks. That'll be a fun one to watch. Eric King is going to give Miami all kinds of identity. As you're watching Marathon Conference kickoff here in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a 2020 season finally underway. Tim, I didn't know that we were going to be here. It's fantastic. There's a decent environment with 12,000 fans here in the stadium. Cranking up the music pregame. It, it has felt legitimate tonight. I agree with you. I didn't know what the feeling would be like inside the stadium with everyone spread out. Obviously, it's not full like you, you, know, you would typically see. But bro, I think you're exactly right. There's good energy here because of the music that's being pumped in. It, you know, it doesn't feel quiet and eerie. It doesn't feel like a fourth preseason game, basically. 
wearing the mask, masked up. Out of the timeout, third and long. Cutting in, across the middle, incomplete. Outstanding coverage. Roger Craig broke it up at the last minute, looking for Des Fitzpatrick, who's cutting in. Yeah, it is an outstanding play by Roger Craig. It's cover one, meaning one safety in the middle of the field and just man-to-man -man coverage across the board. And Craig does a good job of just closing, trusting his technique, getting that left hand out in front. You know, a few boos out here, but I, look, I'm an offensive guy. It's a good route by Des Fitzpatrick. It's just a better play by Roger Craig. Dayton Wade drifts back. Receive this punt. There's Logan Lupo drop the last time he tried this. As Wade calls for the fair catch at his own 27 yard line after a punt of 47 yards. We'll look at the capacities around the Atlantic Coast Conference this season. Clemson for their home opener next week will welcome in just under 20,000. Wake Forest tonight, 100 people. <laughs> what? What do you think you need to do to get on that list, Roy? I don't know. I just know I'm not on it. <laughs> and then, of course, you have five, make it six schools with no fans allowed to start the season. Due, of course, to the uh, local governments and their constraints as they listen to medical experts in their respective areas. An unusual start to the season. We're just happy that it actually has started in the ACC. Play action. Pigram. Incomplete. Looking for Craig Burke. And it's the right read by Pigram. They're basically running a, a bootleg, a, a move the pocket play. They're going to move him to the right. And his options are this. He can throw the corner, he can throw the flat, or he can throw the over route that's coming in. That's the third part. You see he's trying to get there on the run, just not able to deliver an accurate ball because of the pressure. Second down and 10. Walker in the backfield once again for Western Kentucky. And Walker bounces off one defender back to the line of scrimmage and not much else. That's a gain of one. And I think it's these scenarios here. We have third and nine. Now that is not the, you know, the down and distance that you want Tyrell Pickram. You know, Ty Hilton talked about having you know, early success, and obviously they had great field position on the first drive, but living in these third and longs is not playing into a strength of Tyrell Pigram's game. Isaiah Hayes with that last tackle. Five-man pressure now for Louisville. Here they come. Pigram across the middle. Passes caught. Twisting and turning for a first down is Jacor Pearson. His first reception of the night. And that'll move the chains. And it's Pearson's strength after the catch. I mean, basically, if he gets tackled right away, it's not going to be a first down. That extra strength to fight for the first down as Marlon character is trying to corral him is the difference right there. Under five to play. Quick moving first quarter. Season opener for both sides. Pigram. Wants to throw it again. Backside pressure. And the pass will be caught. Pearson's got it. Ball pops out. Cardinals have it. And a lot happening in that sequence. A flag on the field as well. After Russ Yeast picked up the loose football in the wet turf. Well, Russ Yeast is the free safety, and he ends up can't get beat, but he basically puts his helmet right on the football. And Pearson coughs it up, and then Yeast is able to pick it up, advance the football. You know, Brian Brown, the defensive Rolling coordinator. The field, a catch, a fumble, recovered by Louisville. The first and ten, Louisville. Brian Brown, After the defense the play, coordinator. Personal foul, illegal blindside block, number 27, Louisville. The penalty is half the distance to the goal. First down. How about the awareness by Yeast? Obviously not in position to make the play on the ball while it's in the air, forces the turnover, then finds the ability to pick it up. Well, it's it's incredible. He's a guy that saying Brian Brown, the defense coordinator, was so thrilled to have back and healthy. And 
you know, he was beat, he was out of position, he recovers, makes a play, and then you just watch him finish the play. Finish the play in the tackle, get up, corral the football. That's a heck of a football play after a great play by Tyrod P Pigram. Russ Yeast, the son of Craig Yeast, made of Kentucky. Backside pressure, Cunningham lost it. And there's a scrum at the two yard line. D'Angelo Malone got there, big number 10. And the Cards fortunate to make the fumble recovery. They're really fortunate. Left side of your screen here just does an excellent job of getting skinny, and then you just see the speed and ability to finish at the quarterback. You know, and Cunningham thinks he's protected. He's got no idea that it's coming with his backside. He took a shot, and you were right. Louisville fortunate they're able to fall on that football. It'd be a second time that Western Kentucky would have had a possession inside the five yard line. And Malone has been a one man wrecking crew. There he is again. Bottled up. Malone got there. And he escapes to the one yard line. Well, you were saying a one man wrecking crew. And, you know, at under 230 pounds, you think, well, maybe he's a specialist as a pass rusher. But we just saw it against a run. This is a run right at him dealing with a 310 pound offensive tackle. Just throw him out of the way and make a play. And field position has been an issue early in this contest for the Ville. Three straight possessions starting inside their own 11. And now third and 16. Cunningham seven yards deep across the middle. Pass is caught. Braden Smith has it. First down, Louisville ahead to the 49 yard line. That's a gain of 48 yards, and he toasted Devin Key that time. Yeah, when this ball came out of Cunningham's hands, I thought this is a bad idea because you see Kincaid, the safety, really is right there. Just at the last second, opened his hips. I'm not sure why, which made him slow to recover. But I thought this was either going to be a kill shot or basically, you know, an interception. Turns into a big play. We'll fake it to Hall, roll it out to 2 2 at well, and there he goes. First down, Louisville into plus territory. So a gain of 16 yards. Yeah, you know, Louisville wants to get 2 2 at well at least six touches a game. And one of the ways you do it is off of these play action, you know, just run them into the flat, outflank the defense. And then just let him eat up ground with his speed on first down. He said six touches, and I looked at Scott Satterfield, and I'm thinking, should it be like twice that? <laughs> well, they said he... we got to be careful with him, Roy. <laughs> Roy, I think he thought, yeah, you might be right. Maybe I need to rethink six touches. Maybe I need to rethink, what if I double that? I, I was intrigued by the T.Y. Hilton comparison. Obviously, Scott Satterfield familiar with T.Y. Hilton from FIU, and T.Y. Hilton's had an amazing pro career, one of the fastest players in the NFL, and Tutu Atwell is clearly one of the fastest players in college football, and he was described as fast right now. Yeah, fast right now is one way to put it. Cunningham flushed backwards. And the pass will be caught. No, incomplete. As Hassan Hall try to tiptoe the sidelines. And Mikhail Cunningham, five completions so far tonight, Tim. Almost 170 yards through the air. And that was a statistic just a year ago that he excelled at 18.4 yards per completion. A lot of numbers there, but all you need to know, they're picking up a lot of chunk plays. Need nine more yards here to keep this drive alive. Tied at seven, under a minute to play in the first quarter. Cunningham off the back foot. Fitzpatrick has it, makes an empty move into the red zone. Go the cards. This Fitzpatrick's a really good wide receiver, a really good football player. His isolation route up top, basically just running a little curl. Ball is on time into his chest. And then the run after the catch, the ability to make somebody miss keeps your offense on the field. I feel like he is an overlooked player in this explosive Louisville offense. A lot of experience, a lot of production throughout his career. 
just kind of like over reliable and you know I think somebody that, that could end up having a big year if Mikhail Cunningham continues to progress Smith in motion Cunningham back to the air end zone contact and no flag and trying to spot Hawkins Cards have converted three straight third downs of third and nine or longer on this drive. Yeah, their average third down has been third and 13. Which is not exactly staying on schedule. The, the call sheet is, is not deep at third and 13. 12 seconds to go in the first. And off the spin move, Hawkins. He stopped. 14 yard line after a gain of two on what should be the final play of an exciting first quarter. 15 minutes in the books here inside Cardinal Stadium. We're tied at seven. Now coming up next Saturday, 10 a.m. Eastern. Make sure you join Jordan, Eric, EJ, Coach Rick as they preview all the games in the ACC on the huddle. Time is now, guys, will be with you coming up later tonight as well. Talking about all the action inside the Atlantic Coast Conference. It's already taken place this weekend. Big win for the Tar Heels earlier today after a slow start against Syracuse. There goes Cunningham towards the end zone for the touchdown. That time it was too easy. Too easy is right. Louisville gets into an unbalanced set to their left. Off of the play action, it's a good job fighting in pass protection by Hassan Hall. With every defender has their back turned, Mikhail Cunningham just too much. Nice job of Hall fighting in pass protection. Then no one home, and Bailey, who we've seen all over the field, just not able to run with Cunningham. First lead for Louisville in this contest tonight is James Turner banks home the extra point. First play in the second quarter in the books. Mikhail Cunningham with the honors. <laughs> Marathon Conference kickoff has brought us to Cardinal Stadium here in Louisville, Kentucky, where the cards are off and running. Start of our second quarter, 14 to 7 is the lead against Western Kentucky. Tim Hasselbeck, Eric Wood, Roy Philpott. Season opener for Mikhail Cunningham and company. He's averaging about 30 yards per completion so far tonight, Tim. Now, I'm no former quarterback in the NFL, but I think that's pretty good. I mean, if you're looking for yards and that kind of thing, Roy, yeah. Beanie Bishop dropped back to receive the kick. And from one yard deep, Bishop tripped up. Turf Monster got him that time. And a couple of flags on the field as well. We'll check the infraction. Waiting for the dulcet tones of Jeff Flanagan. During the return, holding, receiving team number 85. Penalty's half distance to the goal. First down. Therese Trainers. We take a look at our New York Live Drive recap in Cunningham. A couple of big tosses and grabs here on this possession. Yeah, really big tosses. Backed up. Makes an outstanding throw, a risky throw to Braden Smith down the seam. And you know, that got him, you know, a little momentum. You know, which obviously ended up leading to a third down and you know conversion. But really nice job of, of digging out of your own end. Get you those highlights in just one minute. Pickering's back on the field, facing a deficit for the first time tonight. Inside give, nowhere to run. That's a loss of four on first down. So Gage Walker sent down quickly by Monty Montgomery. The tackle for loss for number seven. All of a sudden, Tim, this Louisville defense starting to flex its muscles a little bit. Showing pressure. They'll back out of it. Pigram. 
All kinds of time. Fires a pass. It's caught. And a gain across the 10 yard line is a pickup of six. Yeah, that's it's kind of critical to at least give yourself a more manageable third down. It's tough being in that situation with a quarterback. When you drop back and your feet are in the end zone and you feel like you're holding the football, you can see Pigram almost like he wanted to take off at the last last second. He was able to find somewhere to go with the football. Mitchell Tinsley, the reception, third down upcoming. Pigram this time flush. Thought about it. Escapes one tackler. He'll be stopped short of the line to gain. It'll bring up fourth down. Now Jared Goldwire, who's had an impressive offseason playing at this nose tackle position in this defense, makes his first tackle tonight, Tim. That's good hustle by Goldwire. You know, Louisville defensive coaches were talking about, hey, don't rush past the QB level, you know, and, and Goldwire does an excellent job of just pursuing as Montgomery is able to cut off his angle. You know, Goldwire, because he's playing with great hustle, ends up getting involved and really preventing a first down. Rajay Burns back deep to receive for Louisville as the Cards force a three and out. And the high snap quickly corralled by Haggerty. Boy, what a weapon. He's Burns stop at the 35 so a punt of 55 yards a return of eight and Louisville football when we come back cards lead it 14 to 7. in Louisville, Kentucky as we take a look at our New York Live Drive recap and it starts with a 61 yard pitch and catch from Cunningham to Braden Smith. It was a dangerous throw on third down but the ball gets there to Braden Smith and that digs Louisville out from being backed up which certainly we're going to be looking forward to punting out of there and then Tutu Atwell to the perimeter just so much speed anytime he touches the football and then when you play man coverage against a quarterback that can run this is what can happen as Cunningham recognizes it is able to walk into the end zone. Two Louisville scoring drives going 92 and 93 yards so far tonight. Tim Hasselbeck, Roy Philpott, Eric Wood here at Cardinals Stadium. Second grab for Atwell, ushered out in plus territory at the 48 after a gain of 17. Yeah, nice move to the pocket play, bootleg to the left. It marries perfectly with the zone run game Louisville likes to run. And then again, the accuracy on balls thrown down the field a bit by Mikhail Cunningham, this time rolling to his left. Talking with Scott Satterfield this week, and I, I looked at him, I said, Coach, I, I don't know that there's anybody on the field Saturday night that can cover 2-2 Atwell. And he said, you know what, I'm not sure there's anybody in the country that can cover 2-2 Atwell. With that speed in the slot, as Hawkins bounces off a defender and barrels his way across the 45 down to the 44 for a gain of four. And I think that's a pretty good point when you look at his numbers from a year ago. And it was just fun to talk to Scott Satterfield about 2-2 Atwell. I mean, everything from, you know, how, how good of a player he is, but also how he's just fun to be around. He's always smiling. He's always, uh, you know, basically just has the an, an energy about him. And then he also mentioned just for a small guy with speed, has great hands, and that is not typical. You think smaller guys, smaller hands, not as easy to, Catch the football. Right side run for Hawkins. That's another first down. Stop at the 34. That's a gain of 11. And the zone run attack. It kind of chips at you, chips at you, chips at you, and then all of a sudden you know, you're able to, to go ahead, put your foot in the ground, make a cut, and go. Hawkins starting to find his rhythm out of the Louisville backfield. Rushed for over 1,500 yards a year ago. Cunningham keeps it and dragged down from behind right at the line of scrimmage. So Damon Lowe with the stop. Louisville averaging over eight yards per play so far. Think about how this game started. You mentioned it during the break. The turnover on the muff punt, quick touchdown for the Hilltoppers. And 
Really didn't see a lot of panic on the Louisville sideline. That's a pretty big deal. That's a very big deal. I think that goes along with the confidence that Scott Satterfield has quickly instilled back in this program. Not easy to do in just one season. Cunningham buys some time. Dangerous toss. And should have been intercepted. Antoine Kincaid got a couple of mitts on it. Couldn't reel it in. Yeah, this is a terrible decision by Cunningham. They're running a boot play the other direction. Very similar to the play we saw Tutu Atwell outflank the defense with on the previous drive. You see him sliding underneath it, uh, across the formation. And really, that's just forced to Des Fitzpatrick. And Cunningham is really fortunate that wasn't picked off. Kincaid had two picks a year ago, the senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. Big one here on third and nine. Clean pocket, Cunningham. Atwell has it. The drive stays alive. Let's check in the studio real quick. Here's Jordan Cordette. Welcome into your Fansville studio update. Georgia Tech leading 16-13. James Blackman and the Knowles threatening. Trying to get a win in Coach, Nor Coach Norvell's debut. Coughs it up. Georgia Tech recovers. And guys, this one is about to go final. Georgia Tech stunning Florida State. Back to you, Roy and Tim. Jordan, thank you very much. What an upset win on the road for Jeff Collins and company. And here's another Louisville touchdown. Well, don't blink your eyes, whether it's Cunningham, Atwell, or J.B. and Hawkins, the triplets getting the job done tonight. They are the triplets, and it's really the foundation of what Louisville wants to do offensively is run the football. They're so well coached up front. You basically see just great movement. Everyone moving together. You look at that offensive line, and then just one little crease is all Hawkins needs. Good quickness, good speed. We've seen the power. Turner's extra point splits the uprights. It's a great job of the off offensive line, that right side working together. Just moving to their right. Everyone in sync, moving to their right. Hawkins finds a crease. He's able to saunter into the end zone. Javian Hawkins scoring from 19 yards out. That last Louisville possession as the Cards extend their advantage. 9.21 to go in our first half. 21 to 7 our score. Eric Wood, Tim Hasselbeck, and Roy Philpott on location here at Cardinal Stadium. It's Dayton Wade. Waits the kickoff from Brock Travelstead. 12,000 fans on hand tonight. The fair catch called for. It'll be first and 10 from the 25. Now, for Piggy T, Tyrell Pegram, they got to find a way to generate some kind of offense, and really the passing game has not been existent so far tonight. No, it hasn't. Ty Helton really talked about how important he thought it was to have early success. Remember, it's a grad transfer that didn't really have spring ball, had an abbreviated training camp. And, you know, you typically, as a grad transfer, have the benefit of those things to, to get kind of dialed in with your new team, and especially in the passing game, which usually takes a little bit more work. And so, you know, I would expect him to try to spread it out a little bit more, but continue to run Pigram. Seven starts, University of Maryland. Gain of two by Gage Walker. Remember, he helped engineer that upset down in Austin, Texas against the Longhorns way back in 2017. So he's produced some big wins on the road. And he has against big time competition. And, you know, certainly has the ability to do it. I think part of it is, is just getting comfortable. But you see, you know, at Maryland, when you're oftentimes playing you know, against superior talent than you have around you, was a productive football player. Second down and eight, this time with time. The pass came out somewhat awkwardly, looking for his tight end, Joshua Simon. You mentioned came out somewhat awkwardly. You see, you know, Simon is just hooking up about two yards, you know, across the line of scrimmage. And that thing just came in hot, you know, and, and Pigram has been described as a guy that has a rocket for an arm. Well, sometimes it just calls for the ball to be thrown a little softer with a little better accuracy. On 
third down. There goes Piggy T. All kinds of real estate. As he's ushered out in plus territory at the 49 yard line. Drive continues after a pickup of 25. And this is what Western Kentucky needs out of Tyrell Pigram. It's a design pass on third and long. They pick up the blitz and then he just takes off and runs, much like we saw Cunningham do. Man coverage, everyone's backs turn, take off and run, and really getting into dangerous territory here with how the offense for Louisville was playing. That's a huge, huge third down conversion for the Hilltoppers. You can see his speed on display on that run. Out in the flats, Pearson has it. And stopped short of the 45 for a short game. Give him four yards. That'll bring up second down and six. A new life right now for the Hilltoppers. You can feel it all the way up here. Yeah, and, and you know, quarterback runs oftentimes can energize your sideline, your offense. I mean, we've we experienced it talk, talking to Tyler Witt, the left guard for the Western Kentucky. Like they like blocking for a quarterback that's got the ability to run the football. Gonna mark him out at the 46 pick row. Quick decision that time. He'll lose a yard. I'm gonna back him up to the 48. Yeah, there's almost, I feel like, some confusion here. He ran it like it was a quarterback draw, but if that was the case, then Gage Walker is supposed to lead up on Etheridge. Just kind of inserted into the wrong gap to get to Etheridge, and that's why no one was there to block him. And Etheridge can make that play all day. Etheridge, one of the vocal leaders. This Louisville defense this year. They're under the microscope. The offense good to go. The defense hoping for improvement this season. Pickram takes off again. Stays behind the line. Cross the middle of the field. Was it caught? No. Incomplete looking for Pearson once again and try to come back to it. That'll bring up fourth down, Tim. And you can see why. You know, there was so much concern from the Louisville coaching staff of just trying to corral Pigram. He does all the hard work, climbs inside the pocket there, gets out. The offensive linemen don't go down the field. I just have to deliver the ball. He doesn't do it. Maybe he's thinking Pearson's going to come back to it. But that clearly skipped on the ground. So after the first down run, Pigram created. Cards defense holds, burns with a fair catch. Louisville leads it by two touchdowns. 6.34 to go in the first. Well, Scott Satterfield told us this week, Mikhail Cunningham did not take a single day off this summer. He's playing like it so far tonight. He is playing like it because he's creating so many big plays. Great job of hanging in the pocket, delivering an absolute strike to Braden Smith. He's able to find Pfeiffer on the corner route off of play action. Then backed up when you need a big play. A risky but effective throw. He's been outstanding, created a bunch of big plays already. Yeah, so Cunningham, 8 of 14 passing. Already over 200 yards through the air. And this time he'll dance around before tossing that one out of bounds, wisely so. Now, I'm no mathematician, but 8 completions, 200 plus yards. That's more than 26 yards per catch in this game so far. Yeah, I mean, and we knew that this is a, you know, an explosive offense. They have a bunch of speed. But I don't think we were expecting it to even Ian Pfeiffer. And I don't think we were expecting it necessarily to Braden Smith. Just goes to show you the weapons at the disposal of Mikhail Cunningham. On second down, Cunningham, an option look, and Hassan Hall stopped short of the 20. It'll bring up third down after a pickup of four. <laughs> Big first half for D'Angelo Malone, another tackle. That'll be his fourth so far tonight. You know, as you look at this on, on Cunningham's numbers and Satterfield, you know, Scott Satterfield telling us, you know, what an accurate passer that he is. He was surprised by that a year ago. I mean, he just continues to, to produce in a way that I think has to start to get everybody's attention of him as a passer. There's something about the way he throws the deep ball 
with outstanding touch. And I, I don't know how easy that is to instill in a quarterback. You either kind of have it or you don't. He's got it. Here's Atwell right at the line to gain. Let's see where they spot it. That'll move the sticks. Well, and that's another good example right there, Roy, of, of good accuracy. It's basically a you know, wide side of the field throw. He's got to put some touch on it. He's throwing to a, a small wide receiver. But he doesn't make it an awkward catch for him. And, and it's throws like that that sustain drives that then lead to opportunities for the big play like we've seen. Atwell, five receptions, 63 yards so far. Try to set up the screen to number one. He didn't realize he was still in bounds for a moment after a short game. Give him three, it'll bring up second down and seven. Think about what Scott Satterfield told us this week as well. He said this unit this year is probably the best that he's had calling plays. And he's calling plays all the way back since 2003 with App State. And they had some prolific offenses We're making the transition to the FBS. Hall tripped up. Pick up another first down, crossing the 40. It's a gain of 14 yards, but when you hear Scott Satterfield say something like that. Yeah, and I think one of the reasons he says it's the most talented offense is you can replace Hawkins with a guy like Hall. Basically, that zone run scheme, both backs, a great feel for it. You're pushing it, you know, to the right. As soon as you see that wall of your offensive lineman moving, foot in the ground, get vertical, it's good instincts, good run by Hall. Cardinals lead it by 14. Deep handoff and Hall around the right side. There he goes, Hassan Hall. Jumped out of bounds inside the 20. Another big time play for one of the top offenses in the ACC. Yeah, it's again starting with the running game. And I believe again they get into kind of a unique formation. They get into an unbalanced look again. And then they they run away from the side of the strength of the unbalance. Do a good job of just covering everybody up and and Hall just too much speed to get to the perimeter. It's a gain of 41 yards already the third play over 40 yards tonight for the Ville. And a dump off Braden Smith. Nifty move out of the 15. Eli Brown shoved him out of bounds to prevent the big gainer. You think about the, the receivers that Louisville has. I mean, obviously, you, you think 2 2 out well. You think Des Fitzpatrick, you know they're excited about Justin Marshall, but we've seen a fair amount of Braden Smith in this game. Big plays, outlets. Just another weapon for this explosive group. On second down, Cunningham. Quick handoff. Hawkins to the edge. Third and short upcoming. It's a gain of five yards. And I think Louisville probably in four down territory facing third and short here. I think there's a good shot of that. I, I, every time I watch this Louisville offense, I'm impressed with their backs. You know, Dwayne Ledford, the offensive coordinator, does an excellent job coaching the offensive line. There is complete buy in. You can tell with the way that they have bought into that zone run scheme. But I think that is contagious to the running backs. I think the, the running backs are feeding off of it, and then they run in a way that's a perfect marriage of the way the backs hit the hole and the way the offensive line comes off the ball. Quick dump off. Marshawn Ford has it. And the Cardinals now the verge of converting on their third. Make that sixth straight third down conversion. Let's see where they spot it. Just a little bit short. And you see a bit of the, the creativity of the offense is, is he kind of as you said Roy accurately predicted on fourth and one here that the offense would stay out on the field. You love it when the play by play guy gets one right. I mean it doesn't happen often. Diamond set on fourth down. Hawkins the running back. Cunningham keeps it to the edge. Did he get there? Number 
And a first down for the Cards. Well, it just shows you what you can do with a quarterback that has that type of speed. It's just a read. It's really a pretty good job by Antoine Kincaid of getting to the perimeter, but just the instincts as a runner of Mikhail Cunningham to push the perimeter, put his foot in the ground, and just fall forward enough for the first down. And Kyle Bailey in on that stop as well. Not enough to prevent the first down. Cunningham. And we live to see another down. As a quarterback, how hard is that to do what Cunningham just did? Because to me, it would not seem instinctual to just get rid of the football out of bounds somewhere when you're trying to score. Well, you know, you throw an interception or two, and all of a sudden it becomes really easy <laughs> to throw the ball away in situations like that. Sounds like you were a quick learner back in the day at the I next mean, level. Uh, that would mean, unfortunately, I, I was quick to throw interceptions in the red zone. But, <laughs> but I do think, to your point, when you have a guy that's so good at creating plays outside the design of an offense, of knowing when it's time just to live for another down. Time winding down here in our second quarter. And off to Hawkins, spun down. And now he'll push the pile towards the end zone. He stopped just short. How about the power by the 5'9", 196 running back. And that's what I mean about it being contagious. I mean, you look at the offensive line. They just continue to work to their right, stay on their blocks, sustain them, and finish them. And then Hall, who again, you know, just looking at him, it's starting to make sense that he was described as a walking muscle. Helmet came off the defense and qualifies for 10-second runoff. Helmet came off. Results in a 10-second runoff. So Eli Brown goes to the sideline for Western Kentucky. Louisville has declined the 10-second runoff. The clock will start on the snap. Still with three timeouts left. That certainly makes sense. Not a lot of new rule changes this year in 2020. Targeting penalty now results in a disqualification as opposed to an ejection, meaning the player has to leave the playing surface. I like that. It makes sense. I, I, I completely agree with you. I, I think that was a much needed adjustment and a good one. And, and a lot of change for the 2020 season. So the more we can keep the same, probably the better. One of the other big changes, the sidelines now extended for both teams into the 15. And a dump ball, Ford has it, and he's got a touchdown. Marshawn Ford led the AC touchdown receptions a year ago from his tight end position, as a tight end, obviously. And his first scoring strike brought in tonight. And they love the former walk-on. Basically, a version of the triple option here. You're going to fake the, the, the dive, basically. That's your pitch man, Ford, the tight end, coming across the formation. Really creative design by... Dwayne Ledford and Scott Satterfield, and that's why Ford ends up being kind of wide open on the perimeter for the walk-in score. Turner remains perfect. And our new score, 28 to seven with 42 seconds remaining here in our first half. Marshawn Ford, red shirt sophomore. Don't forget, coming up next Saturday, another college football triple header right here on ACC Network, Syracuse and Pittsburgh. Get things started at noon, followed by the Citadel and number one ranked Clemson for the Tigers. Home opener in Death Valley. That's at 4, then at 8 o'clock in primetime. Wake Forest and NC State. What a time to be alive as college football returns in the ACC. And a great start tonight for Louisville as you see Marshawn Ford. Eight touchdowns now in his career, but DeVille, five possessions. They've scored four times in those last five possessions, Tim. Three red zone trips and three touchdowns. And that's also three drives now of at least 85 yards. And so, you know, I think sometimes when you hype up an offense coming into a season, you know, it just... You typically see like a little bit of sputtering, maybe you know some growing pains. And after the first drive, I'm starting to think, well, maybe that will happen. But nope, the Louisville offense picking up where they left off from a year ago. 28 unanswered on the board for the Cards. 
Western Kentucky. Timeout, 42 seconds to work with at their own 25. And let's see what Tyson Helton elects to do, the younger brother of Clay Helton, head coach at SC. He did mention since SC's not playing that he's not against getting, you know, a little red zone help from his brother and some play designs. So a couple fair. of phone calls were made, right? It's fair. I have, a, I have a couple brothers. I definitely bounce some ideas off each other. That's fair. Hilltoppers with just three first downs tonight, excuse me. I was going to say, my ideas are much better than my brother's. <laughs> I, I, I think Ty thinks his ideas are better than Clay's. I think that's how it works in families, right? Mm -hmm. Gage Walker. Been held in check so far tonight. Now over 10 yards rushing. The former defensive back, Brown Gator. Now Louisville was picked fourth in the ACC preseason poll. And I'm not sure where they will fit in after this first half, but that appears to be about on target. And, and maybe even in a position where they could creep up a couple of spots higher. 337 first half yards for one of the most explosive offenses, not only the ACC, but perhaps the country. 28 to 7, our halftime score. You now the rain has stopped. College football returns here in the Derby City. In the second year under Scott Satterfield, the ACC coach of the year just a season ago. Off to a fantastic start. And Eric Wood has coach downstairs. Eric. Coach, after a sloppy start to the game, you fumble the punt, gives them their only score in the first half. Talk about the composure of your Cardinals. Yeah, no, it's great to see the composure. I mean, I, you know, first time punter is out there and mishandled the snap. And uh, our, our defense is playing outstanding. You know, they got the ball on the one yard line. That was their only score. And, uh, you know, our, our kids didn't panic, kept playing, and that was really early in the game. Um, impressed by the way we finished the second quarter right there. We had some nice drives. Uh, offensively picking up those third downs, man, on a lot of these drives is really helping us. Um, they've done a great job stopping the run. Uh, we tried to find some ways to, to get it going. We had a couple big runs there, but I think Malik's playing really good tonight. Yeah, thanks, Coach. All right, thank you. Fast start for the Cards, 28 to 7, our halftime score. Kale Cunningham, over 240 yards of total offense. Halftime report coming up after this quick break. Welcome into the ACCN halftime report. Louisville leads Western Kentucky. 28 to 7. In firm control, I'm your host, Jordan Cornett, joined by the coach, Mark Rick. And coach, before we get to you, let's get to how Louisville got to this point at the half. Let's take a look at the highlight. Louisville hosting Western Kentucky, four minutes into the game. Cardinals down 7-0. Kale Cunningham, smooth operator, making a strong statement in the first stanza, finds Ian Pfeiffer for the 23-yard touchdown. Louisville ties it up 7-7. After Hilltopper fumble, Louisville. Ball on a one-yard line, third and 16. Cunningham finds Braden Smith for the 48-yard pickup. What a grab. Sports Center top 10. Shout out to Jack Harlow. Third and eight for Louisville. Start of the second half. Cunningham showing his game. Tucks it, takes it himself. Touchdown cards. All Louisville in that first half, leading 28 to seven. A dynamic performer, seventh career game with one pass touchdown. One rush touchdown. Coach, I know you're incredibly high on Mikhail Cunningham. You got to be loving what you've seen so far. Right. It's going just as planned. You know, you see his deep ball ability. You see uh, his play action pass ability. Uh, we also see his scrambling ability for a touchdown. I mean, everything that we thought he could do, he's doing. We've been, we've been having a lot of rough uh, deep ball throws all day long, and Mikhail nails a couple deep ones to Smith. The first time he hit him was on this play right here, which was the perfect coverage to hit him on. The second time he hit him, he really shouldn't have thrown it into coverage. He got, he got lucky, quite frankly. But uh, yeah, this is the one right here with the, no, excuse me, that was, that was the correct coverage he threw that to. They came right back to it. It was a one high safety, almost got it picked. But he just did a beautiful job. And uh, anyway, he, he is uh, playing exactly the way you want him to play. They've had drives of 92, 93, and 85 yards, over 337 yards of offense. So it's, it's pretty spectacular right now. Coach, so, many, so much speed, so many weapons, so many options for Mikhail Cunningham. 
as you look at this offense, how dangerous can it be? What's the ceiling for an offense like this in a conference? Well, I don't think there is one right now. I think the only, I think the biggest worry is keeping Mikael Cunningham safe and healthy. And I will say he made some pretty good choices uh, when he did run the ball. He wasn't trying to take somebody on and be some kind of physical hero. So if he's smart and he gets what he can get in the running game and slides or goes out of bounds, you know, he doesn't have to win a physical battle at the end of a run. If he keeps doing that, I think his boys will keep him safe. And, uh, you know, Hawkins is a great back. Hall's a great back. Tutu Atwell, uh, you know, they, they've just got some weapons that uh, never quit so far. Paging JV and Hawkins. Paging Mr. Hawkins. He was doing work in that first half. Let's take a look at some of that action from Hawkins. Taking the backfield, following the blocks. Big time hole he busts through. Cardinals cruising. We'll talk about an upset on the other side. Stick with us. Welcome back in to the ACC at halftime report. The huddle, it's happening tonight right after the conclusion of Western Kentucky and Louisville. One hour of all the action-packed scenes we saw in the kickoff of the football season, the first football Saturday. Join me and the fellas, Coach Mark Rick, EJ Manuel, and Eric McLean. Big upset. That's right, the Mike Norvell era begun in Tallahassee. Not the way they had hoped for. Jordan Mason, namesake, 19 yards for the touchdown. Georgia Tech within three at that point in the fourth quarter. Georgia Tech trailing by six in the red zone again. True freshman Jeff Sims, a deep commit from Florida State, connects with Malachi Carter, the 15-yard touchdown. It's all tied at 13. Ten minutes left in the game. Jude Kelly probably going to miss, right? No way. It goes in. Georgia Tech 16-13. They hold on by that score. More from the guys in the booth. Joe Tessator and Greg McElroy as we wrap up things in Tallahassee. Greg, this wasn't supposed to happen. This was a Georgia Tech team that was undermanned on defense. Key players were out. They were starting a true freshman. They're playing on the road against a very talented group of skill position players for Florida State who had a 10-0 lead. Yeah. So how does it happen that they pull the upset 16 to 13? They just hung in there and they really controlled the game from start to finish. And if you look at and take away the mistakes that they made, they had two interceptions that were massive that killed drives in Florida State territory. They had two field goals that were blocked way deep inside Florida State's red zone. And then on top of it all, they even had an extra point blocked. But Jude Kelly delivered the game winner in his fourth opportunity there. And I, I was happy for him, frankly. I really was. As, as a parent myself, I was happy for him. But it showed toughness. It showed resilience. It showed mental capability to overcome difficult circumstances throughout the game. And, you know, it was a testament to how hard this group has worked throughout the course of the offseason. Georgia Tech outscores Florida State 16 to 13 in the second half to pull the upset. And now they go back home to take on Central Florida. That should be a great one next Saturday. That does it from here in Tallahassee. Joe, Greg, thank you very much. So, Coach, let's start right there. Is this more about Georgia Tech and their improvement in year two with Coach Collins, or is this about a team that's just not at all even close to there in the first year under Coach Norvell for Florida State? Well, truth be told, Florida State has now lost four game openers in a row, the most in school history. So there is a trend here, and it didn't start with Coach Norvell. But uh, I'll say this. Starting with me, everybody in the media owes Georgia Tech an apology <laughs> for voting him, if not last, close to last in the league. Uh, the rebuilding project is happening a little bit faster. But, you know, having Sims at quarterback certainly helped. They, they picked the guy that they thought had the best potential, and uh, he certainly came through. No one wins a game getting three kicks blocked like that. And I'll say this about Odell Higgins, the D-line coach at Florida State. That's an that's a effort deal by the D-lineman. And Robinson got two, and Wilson got one. And that reminded me of an extra point that we got blocked when I was trying to beat him my first year at Miami. Same thing happened at the end of the game and ended up losing. But uh, Georgia Tech hung there and won it, and uh, they deserve all the props. You know, Coach, it's interesting. You mentioned those four straight losses in season openers there in Tallahassee. That is not only a school record. That is an active conference record 
for such a streak. So this Florida State team, try to figure things out. Look, it's a weird week one. It was a weird game with the delays, with the weather there. Maybe that took them out of a rhythm. One thing for certain Knowles fans, they're not looking for excuses. They are looking for results. Clemson currently cruising right now over Wake Forest, 27-0, as the second half is picked up in that one. We're about to get back to that action. Louisville in control, 28-7 over Western Kentucky, and it's because of the efforts of that young man, Mikhail Cunningham. 28-7, all Louisville. We return back for some second half action right after this break. Welcome back to the Marathon Conference kickoff. Start of our third quarter back inside Cardinals Stadium. 28-7, the Ville leading Western Kentucky. Tim Hasselbeck, Roy Philpott, Eric Wood on location tonight. A good start for the Cardinals and Mikhail Cunningham. Great start for Mikhail Cunningham. Scott Satterfield talked about how hard he worked in the offseason, and it looks like it's paying off. Move the pocket play, does a great job of seeing Ian Pfeiffer's tight end pop open over the top. And then the explosiveness, elusiveness as a runner just makes him so dangerous at any point. And obviously down in the red zone again, basically a new version of the triple option as he finds his tight end, Marshawn Floyd. Triplets getting the job done in the first half. Mikhail Cunningham accounting for three total scores. Hawkins and 2 2 Atwell putting up quality production as well. We check in once again with Eric Wood. E. Wood, what you got? Yeah, I talked to Coach Helton coming out of the half, and I said, how does your team get back into this game? And he mentioned just the fundamentals. It's early in the season, first game of the year. They got to throw and catch better. They got to tackle better. And I asked him about the big plays through the air for the Cardinals, and he said they need to get to the quarterback better. I've seen Malone get there a couple times tonight. He wants more production out of that defensive line, though. He would doing a great job staying dry as the rain continues to pour down here in the Derby City. And Tyson Helton in search of some offense to start this third quarter, Tim. If you're trying to dial up some plays for Tyrell Picker and Piggy T, maybe something on the ground to kind of get things going in the right direction. I would agree with you. Maybe try to spread it out a little bit more. Easy completions if you need to, but run them. And Dayton Wade. Crossing the 25 ahead to the 27 yard line as we take a look at our Zaxby's first half stats. You pointed out the first down numbers to me at halftime. I mean, it just, it's hard to win, you know, when you're getting outpaced like that in terms of staying on the field and converting on third downs. And you know, the fact that they've got 15 first downs in this game. You know, talk about the defensive ends, you know, generating more pressure, but you're on the field a lot. Pickering back on the field. And the new running back joins him in the backfield, Noah Winnington. And he's quickly bottled up. He's going to lose a bundle all the way back inside the 25 for a loss of five. Dorian Etheridge leading the charge. And we talked about the defensive line in the front in general. You know, having a good day against Western Kentucky a year ago. More of the same to start the second half, just playing on the other side of the ball. Big question mark coming into this season for this team. The defense. Worse in the conference a year ago, despite significant improvement from 2018. Pearson has it. Quality tackling again. Stop at the 20. He's going to lose another yard. Yeah, you, mentioned, you mentioned that defense being the weak link. There's no question it was, but just look at the way they're running the football now. It's Etheridge again as that ball is spit out to the perimeter. And I think guys like C.J. Avery and Dorian Etheridge, their experience and their leadership, and then a little more continuity in terms of having the same defensive coordinator, you know, as the previous season, should help this defense quite a bit. Third down and 16. Here comes the pressure. Pickram off his back foot. Incomplete and a flag on the field. Pass interference coming in this Western Kentucky possession will stay alive as Anthony Johnson was in coverage. Got a little handsy that time. He did, and I think that Craig Burt did a nice job of drawing. Pass interference, the penalty. defense, number 27, 15-yard penalty, first down. 
One of the things a good receiver will do is once the ball is in the air, it doesn't matter what the route was. Now go fight for the football. And you see Burt just basically go up and try to fight for the football and then fighting for it through contact, which draws the foul. It's the right call. And it's really because of a good job by the wide receiver. Johnson, the red shirt junior. Gage Walker motions out of the backfield for Western Kentucky. Hilltoppers need some points on this possession. The snap came out late that time. Ball start. Offense number 70. Five yard penalty. First down. Up tackle Cole Spencer. Hilltoppers so far tonight, Tim, just 114 total yards. Pigram with time across the middle, incomplete. Mitchell Tinsley looking for his second grab instead. Outstanding coverage by Trey Clark. It was good coverage by Trey Clark. And, you, know, you can see he's not a real accurate throw. As Pigram, you know, seems like he rushes it a little bit. Ball's hot. It's out in front and low. And, you know, it really does seem like Ty Helton's trying to, to find easy completions. The quarterback's just not able to come up with it. Pigram quickly this time. Pass reeled in short of the 40. Craig Burton this time. It'll bring up third down. Chandler Jones in coverage. The tackle. Western Kentucky in search of some sort of spark to start this second half. Hilltoppers won nine games a year ago, including a comeback bowl victory against Western Michigan. Incomplete. Pearson would have been stopped short of the line to gain. It'll bring up fourth down. Rajay Burns. This is similar to the one we saw earlier in the drive. Ball's a little bit more accurate, but because of the Pigram's a little bit late. Rajay Burns able to drive on the football and then good timing, trust your technique, don't grab the receiver, get that hand out in front. Rajay Burns drops back to receive this punt from John Haggerty. Preseason special teams player of the year in Conference USA. That's one of the reasons why he's been a weapon tonight. 28 to 7, Louisville leading Western Kentucky. As the cards have the football, we come back. Back in Louisville, Kentucky, a tragedy occurred here on March 13th of this year as Brianna Taylor was shot and killed in her own home. Timeline of events back to early March. In the next month, a wrongful death lawsuit was filed by Taylor's mother against three officers involved in the shooting. Fast forward two months later, after an investigation conducted by the Kentucky Attorney General and the FBI, Louisville Metro Council unanimously passed Brianna's law banning no-knock warrants. It was signed into law the very next day. The officer, Brett Hankinson, fired 10 shots into Taylor's apartment, was fired on June 23rd. And reports surfacing the Kentucky Attorney General's office will release their findings coming up next week. Tragedy has weighed on the minds of the players here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and across the landscape of college football in the country as well. And certainly something that players, the Louisville Cardinals, talked about with us throughout this past week. Second and ten coming up here inside Cardinal Stadium. Tim Hasselbeck, Roy Philpot, Eric Wood on the sideline. Score tells the story so far. 
really does. And it was a slow start for Louisville, but at the same time, kind of no flinch mentality, kind of stick with it. And then we've just seen so much of this explosive offense because of the speed on the perimeter of the Cardinals. Hawkins with a handoff. And, uh, Gain of three yards. It'll bring up third down and seven. So it's another third and long, which is surprising considering how well Louisville's run the football. But you, know, you heard Scott Satterfield tell, tell Eric going in at halftime, you know, they've been, they were fortunate to, to convert on some of those third downs. And a lot of it had to do with one, the arm of Mikhail Cunningham, but also just his ability as a runner. Hilltoppers need a stop. Trying to get the ball back for their offense. Cunningham back foot, high for Atwell. And after picking up an initial first down, Western Kentucky standing tall defensively. Mario Wright Jr. in coverage for the Hilltoppers. Clayton Wade back deep to receive. It's Logan Lupo. Dropped the first long snap he received of the game, setting up Western Kentucky's only score. And if you think about it, Louisville's defense has been rock solid. That one was blocked. Ball pops out in Western Kentucky. It'll be first down and goal for the Hilltoppers. Omari Alexander. Bursting through the line of scrimmage and new life. It seemed like Lupo was taking quite a bit of time to get that ball off. And as he was doing that, obviously, punt gets blocked. He gets drilled. But just look at how long this takes. It's just developing, and it clearly wasn't in sync as he kind of moves to his left with the protection. And the punt team been an absolute disaster for Louisville tonight. As, as good as this game has gone for their offense, it's been equally as bad for their punting unit. Alexander transferring to Louisville from Eastern Kentucky. He's had perfect attendance in school for over 13 years, and he's been perfect tonight on special teams. Hilltopper's going to try to sneak back in this one here in the third. Straight ahead. Gage Walker. Second and goal coming up from the one. When you think about, you know, Scott Satterfield talking about the kicking game, his biggest question mark. Tried, tried to come up with competition throughout their training camp. You know, rotated punters throughout training camp. And twice now, the ball's been turned over inside the 10 yard line because of that punting unit. Malik Staples now in the backfield. Simon in motion on second and goal. Staples straight ahead across the goal line for the touchdown. And just like that, Western Kentucky back in this one in the second half. You know, giving them life. I mean, they really had, you know, nothing going offensively. Really were having a hard time getting a stop. Fortunately, get a third and long, they're able to get off the field. And, you know, in fairness to the Louisville defense, you know, when, when you, you're standing in your own end zone, when the drive starts, that's just tough sledding. Certainly giving Western Kentucky new life. Malik Staples started out as a defender here at Louisville, transfers to Western Kentucky, now scores against his own program, or his old program, rather, and all set up by the block punt by Omari Alexander moments ago. Early in the season, you think that it's offense or defense mistakes, but no, it's special teams that maybe get this thing turned around for Western Kentucky. We welcome you back to ACC Network Football presented by Geico. Western Kentucky back in this one. Inside Cardinal Stadium after Logan Lupo had his punt block just moments ago. 28 to 14, our score. 
Second half just underway. Well, Louisville's been rock solid, really, in everything it's tried to execute tonight, with the exception the punt team. And that one dropped Kick by Hassan not Hall. Far behind. Quickly recovered, so special teams perhaps a work in progress. And Lupo on the sideline just a few minutes ago. What's he saying right here? Yeah, not, not an expert lip reader, but that wasn't on me. That wasn't on me. It's kind of a bad look as he looks like he's talking into the stands. You know, it did not look like the protection was married up with his little half roll to the left. That being said, that's that would be similar to a quarterback looking up to the stands after throwing an interception saying that's not on me. That's Tim Hasselbeck, boy Phil Pot, Eric Wood on location here. Opener 2020 season Fitzpatrick escorted out near the 21 yard line for the bill after a gain of six. Omari Alexander credited with a stop. I, I just continue to be impressed with how accurate Mikhail Cunningham is on the move. Another move for the pocket play. We've seen a number of them tonight and on the run to his right. Just a ball that allows Fitzpatrick to catch and run afterwards. Second grab for Des Fitzpatrick, fifth year senior from Michigan. Hawkins probing the right side. He'll have another Louisville first down. Plunging across the 30. I think you nailed it with your descriptions. Probing the right side. You saw the patience. That's exactly what he was doing. And then plunging the strong finish. I mean, Hawkins, another impressive part of this offense tonight. Look at the patience there as that offensive line continues to work. And then go ahead and finish strong. Continue to, to kind of move those legs, even as you're kind of being corralled by the defense. You know, the triplets aren't that big, but they're big on the field when it comes to production. Fitzpatrick off the double move. Deep ball. He caught it. Fitzpatrick has it, and he's going to score a touchdown for the Bell. He stole that one out of the air on a dangerous toss from Cunningham, and how do you like that? As a quarterback, you don't like it. You love what Des Fitzpatrick did there because Cunningham throws that football, and it probably should be intercepted. You see, his safety is going to rotate back into the middle of the field. As you see, Kincaid is there. But Fitzpatrick, like I said earlier, balls in the air. Who cares what your route was? Now go get the football. Look at Kincaid. Understand that the ball is being thrown deep. Finds it. Basically doesn't get in position to go get it up high. And then Fitzpatrick says, no, 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 that's mine. Cunningham over 300 yards through the air. Louisville extending its lead, 35 to 14. Under nine to play in the third. Marathon Conference kickoff has brought us to Cardinal Stadium here in Louisville, Kentucky, and the home team flexing to start our second half. 35 to 14. Des Fitzpatrick all smiles after that last scoring strike. I mean, you can't believe watching these guys because they're going to put points on the board. And so many different players that can basically make you pay from any point in the field. Hilltoppers back to work on offense. Kale Cunningham putting up enormous numbers. 16 completions over 300 yards, three touchdowns through the air. Another on the ground for the dual threat signal caller. So think about what we've seen today. North Carolina stumbles out of the gates first two quarters. Offense took a little while to get rid of. Defense was great against Syracuse. Heels get the win. Notre Dame a little sluggish against Duke. And the two touchdown victories, the handoff straight ahead. Bring up second down and three. What you're seeing from Louisville tonight, defense has taken a step in the right direction. Offense is right where you would expect it to be. This team's got a chance to to make some noise in the conference. I really agree with you. And I think that, you know, and obviously what is, there's been, a, you know, 
a lot of change in the conference with Notre Dame now in the conference for the year and not having the divisions. Higram's got a first down. Bolts ahead to the 44. Gain of 11 yards. I think Louisville is a really good football team. I think they're extremely well coached. And, uh, you know, Scott Satterfield, obviously, as the head coach, is getting a lot of credit for it. But I think he's put together a group of really good assistants that have done a nice job. That's why I believe you saw the quick turnaround. And there's talent on this football team. We clearly see it on the offensive side of the ball. I think consistency defensively is going to be critical. For the first down run, Pigram with time now flush. Surveys and fires incomplete. As he was trying to spot Tyler Smith, check that that was taken away. For the ACC outlook this year, of course, no divisions. There's 10 conference games in the plus one model due to COVID 19. But the big addition, the Fighting Irish, the Golden Domers now a part of the ACC for this year only. Picked up the win earlier today, but a lot of people expecting Notre Dame to challenge the preseason favorite Clemson this year. Yeah, I mean, they have a quarterback that's got now, I guess, 21 wins under his belt. Part of the reason why. Picker will buy some time. He'll have a first down on the completion to Mitchell Tinsley. Ushered out inside the 40, so into plus territory for Western Kentucky once again. And I will tell you, last year, you know, I, I, I called the the Wake Louisville game that, that was 62 to 59. If, if I'm Louisville, I, you hope that you learn from those situations. And so, you know, you, you don't take your foot off the gas defensively. If you want to heat up the quarterback, continue to bring those pressures. And also just let allow your defense to mature and understand how to play in these situations. After a gain of 21, Pigram spins around. Losses bearings for a moment now sit out of bounds after a loss of a couple. The pressure that time coming from Monty Montgomery. That's a loss of three yards. But I, I think these situations and scenarios are, are things that you can really you can learn about how to play in these environments so that you know you don't have to learn some of the hard lessons that you learned, you know, a year ago. But giving up big plays and let people back into football games. Pigram pulls it out, scampers ahead, back to the original line of scrimmage. Yeah. Tripped up by Chandler Jones, and it'll bring up third and ten. And that's a pretty good example. That's Chandler Jones. He's the boundary corner. It's a designed quarterback run, you know, zone read type run. And he ends up making a tackle because they're bringing him. So even though in a, in a game where you've got pretty good control, you're not softening too much, you're continuing to bring blitzes from the boundary when you feel like it's necessary. Walker flanking Pigram in the backfield. Four wide for Western Kentucky. Pigram bottled up, out of bounds, it'll bring up fourth down. Outstanding coverage by the Cardinals secondary. Great coverage, just an eight-man drop, three-man rush. Great coverage and then a good job of the defensive linemen of not rushing past the quarterback, keeping him contained. So it's basically what you call a tent coverage. You're gonna rotate basically to, to what amounts to a three deep, but rolling the safety up over the top, the top of the screen, nowhere to go with the football. And a little bit of no man's land here, which would make me wonder a little bit about that third down call now that you're going for it on fourth and 10. Fourth down and 11. Tyson Helton is gonna utilize a timeout. I can't say that I blame him. Timeout. Western Kentucky. First charge timeout. What has to be the play timeout of the game upcoming. Seconds. Tyson Helton in search of another spark, this time for his offense. And don't forget, coming up, the huddle. Next Saturday, 10 a.m. Coach Rick, Jordan Cornett, E.J. Manuel, Eric McLean. Got you covered. It all happens in the huddle as they get you ready for another triple header of ACC Network football. Hopefully, McLean doesn't chest bump anybody this year. Did Steve you see that last year with, uh, with Collinsworth? Yeah, he almost killed Collinsworth. <laughs> hey, I, I've, I've got a homework assignment for everybody at the huddle. Later tonight, I want to hear the guys all 
at some point in time pronounce correctly the backup quarterback at Clemson to Trevor Lawrence. <laughs> and I'm going to test E. Wood because he's going to be in Tigertown next week. I'm going to test you later tonight as well. Trevor Lawrence, DJ Uyangalale. If you don't know, you better ask somebody because he's the real deal. I thought it was Woody Dantzler. No? <laughs> he's not the backup. See if the guys in the huddle can get that one knocked out later. Big play for Western Kentucky right now. Backside pressure. Piggy T sack back at the 50 yard line. Monty Montgomery. And number seven with his second sack of the night flexing on that possession against the Hilltoppers. Two big plays in a row by Monty Montgomery. They view him as a starter and comes off the bench sometimes. But just look at the speed to close. And Tyrell Pigram, you know, he's seen as a uh, pass rush specialist, third down, get him on the field, let him run. All of a sudden, this Louisville defense in situations like that looking very different than they did a year ago. We were tipped off this week that Montgomery would be utilized as a spy against Piggy T. And that has paid dividends on several occasions tonight. That athleticism, his length, and his speed. Cunningham off the back foot. Rockets a pass. Fitzpatrick. A little shake and bacon. Another first down into WKU territory. I love everything about this. Big stop, come out throwing, stay aggressive. Great timing by the quarterback. Des Fitzpatrick, who I feel like is just overlooked big time in this offense. But look at this, play action, on time. One hitch, ball out, right to the face mask of your wide receiver, and then good finish by Des Fitzpatrick. It's a gain of 17. That looked like seven on seven drills in the middle of the summer. Cutting in, flashing speed and spun down after a short pickup. Jeremy Darvin got there to prevent the big game. Cardinals projected as the number four team in the ACC this year. Impressive win the Music City Bowl last season against Mississippi State. Spotted the Bulldogs 14 points. And then it was all McHale and 2 2. Plus a little bit of number 10. Flag on the field. They lose a couple of yards. Let's check the infraction. Eli Brown, the stop. Think about it for all the penalties we've seen in earlier games. Illegal formation. Offense, five men in the backfield. The penalty would be declined. Third down. This game has been relatively clean on both sides. It really has. You know, the mistakes we've seen have been, you know, primarily special teams mistakes, especially on the Louisville side. Third down and long. Cunningham fires a pass incomplete. Too much zest that time for Justin Marshall. Marshall, the redshirt junior from Conyers, Georgia. Got no man's land, you know, once again. Again, I, you know, I think if you find yourself in these situations, that third down call, if you're going to end up going for it on, on fourth down, because you don't think you can, you know, make a field goal there, you're not punting from this, you know, area of the field. But typically something that to, you know, chip away at it a little bit more. Turner's made all four extra points tonight. That's it. Cunningham floats it. Incomplete. Nearly picked off. And in fact, it would be better for Western Kentucky if that potential interception was dropped in terms of field position. And Cunningham a little slow to get up after unleashing that last pass. Whirling on the field. It's an interception by the defense. First down. So they're going to say Antoine Kincaid, who probably should have had two picks earlier tonight, comes up with that one. And that's the one that 
he didn't want to come up with because the ball would obviously go back to the line of scrimmage, but you see it bouncing around on the Western Kentucky. Ruling on the field. Defenders. An interception by the defense. The previous play is under further review. And Malone came barreling down on Cunningham to apply that pressure. Let's see if it stays up. You know, Alexander like corralled Alexander. it, didn't he? Yeah, that's Alexander as he's laying on the ground. And I really don't think this ball hits the ground at all. Talk about hot potato. Yeah, that seems because I I'm pretty sure that Roger Cray. So you see the low hit on Cunningham. But I'm pretty sure that, that that's kind of hitting Roger Cray's right hip and the ball never hits the ground and then Ball right basically falls right on Alexander. And I'll okay. say as, as a quarterback, I'll say as we see Cunningham, the worst spot that you want to get hit as a thrower, you know, is down around your legs. Well, assuming the call stands, what a night for Omari Alexander, who's from Louisville, had the block punt, and then now the interception as a replay booth. Certainly going to confirm the call on the field. After Bob Welch, our replay review, official. Running on the field is confirmed. First down. Yeah, and you see the hit on Cunningham here. Basically, this is a low hit. This is the National Football League. This is a personal foul. Don't know that it's intentional, but you see as Malone is kind of wrapped up and then he gets hit high by Jones and that's the last thing Louisville needs you know last year Cunningham was playing with a knee brace had a, it, you know kind of had a bunch of injuries Burns with the sack of Pigram all the way back behind the 20 yard line so Louisville another tackle for loss the eighth of the night for the Cards D in the front of this Louisville card Cardinal defense drastically different than it did a year ago. I mean, you know, Scott Satterfield talking about, you know, we need to eliminate mental errors, need to, you know, stop giving up so many big plays, but we really also need to get after the quarterback doing more of that tonight. Well, toppers, an important possession here to try to creep back into it once again. Pigram. Going to take off and lasso down, crossing the 25. So after a loss of five, Pigram picks up ten. It'll be third down and five, Tim. Yeah, and with what I've seen tonight, I will continue to do kind of what they did there. Spread them out. You want to call a pass, fine. But, you know, at least they have the quarterback have the ability with everybody to spread out to just try to find a lane. Strictly throwing the ball from the pocket. This down and distance hasn't really been working for Tyrell Pigram tonight. Flat-footed, delivers low and incomplete. Jacor Pearson, the intended receiver, the coverage by Isaiah Hayes, and he was all over. You mentioned it being flat-footed. I mean, and, and that really what it was what it, exactly what it was. It's an outbreaking route by Pearson. Pigram has him, but he's just flat-footed, and he's kind of waiting to see it first rather than anticipating it. And he's late, balls, you know, inside. It's one of the reasons I thought, you know, spread him out, give him an option as a runner. Haggerty sends it to Burns, calls for the fair catch at the 24. So a punt of 48 yards for the first team all conference USA performer. And the cards back on the field. And I would ask you this, Mikhail Cunningham, you got a 21 point lead. Appeared to be banged up there for a second after the attempted sack by D'Angelo Malone. What point in time do you think about going to your backup? I mentioned I saw in person the 62-59 game in Winston-Salem. So not yet is, is my answer to that. Obviously, I'd want to know how he's doing. I want to know, you know, what was it? You get the wind knocked out of you, is it your knee? What, what, what's going on? If he's healthy, I'd have him back in. I'm not starting to think about that until we're a little bit further into the fourth quarter. Hall gets the carry. It's been a strange game tonight. Louisville's had several long scoring drives. 
Western Kentucky has scored twice. He's only had to go a couple of yards to do it. One off the muff punt, the other on the block punt. And I don't know that you see oh. that all too often. I mean, it makes you feel like this Louisville defense would be pitching a shutout. You know, but not for those turnovers. One, it, it's super impressive by Louisville in terms of what they've been able to do offensively. Two, you realize the bind your special teams can put you in. Cunningham trying to get to the edge. Float that one out of bounds. Well, it certainly speaks to the great job done by defensive coordinator Brian Brown. And really, the charge this year was try to figure out a way to prevent all those big plays the Cards defense gave up a year ago. And so far tonight, that's happened. Granted, it's Western Kentucky, but it's a team that won nine games last year. Won nine games, struggled on defense, were really bad on, you know, they, they got better on defense a year ago than they were in, in 2018. And so how much better can they be this year to support this high flying offense? Tunnel screen, other side of the field on third down and long, and the Hilltoppers ready and waiting. Omari Alexander continues his outstanding play tonight. Sniffed that one out from the get-go. It appears as if D'Angelo Malone, Defensive Player of the Year in Conference USA, was banged up on that last play. We really hope he's able to get up and on his own power and get off the field. But I tell you, we enjoyed talking to him. I mean, it, when you watch Western Kentucky to play, I mean, he just jumps out at you with his explosiveness, his relentlessness. And, you know, guys like that, that play as hard as he plays and just competes the way that he competes, just contagious. He took a shot right in the head. Donato Brown got him. You got 6'4", 330 barreling down on you. That's not going to end well most of the time, but D'Angelo appears to be okay. And he's a guy that's got next level potential written all over. Outside linebacker perhaps in a 3-4 scheme. Let's see what Logan Lupo can do on this punt. What do you think Scott Satterfield's thinking right now? I don't think he's comfortable. No? Lupo just a sophomore. Dropped a snap in the rain earlier. And a punt block later. Gets this one cleanly away this time. And the Hilltoppers with pretty good field position to start their next possession. Don't forget. Follow everything going on inside the ACC every weekday morning from 7 to 10 a.m. Packer and Durham. Mark Packer, West Durham cover the ACC better than any other tandem on the planet. And I know because I watch it every single day. By the way, great to see that West Durham is okay. A little COVID issue with the testing this week. The last test came back negative after an inconclusive. I know. Certainly he wanted to call that game down in Chapel Hill earlier today. Didn't happen, but Wes, glad you're doing well. Look forward to listening to your call tomorrow with Atlanta Falcons. It's the world we live in in 2020. 105 to go in our third quarter. Here's the screen. Burt has it. And with the convoy ahead of him into Louisville territory. Don't look now at Western Kentucky trying to start something. See, I think those are the types of throws that you need to get Tyrell Pigram going with. These throws that are that are predetermined, the screens that are right at the line of scrimmage. It's not a decision to be made. It's catch and spit it out. Have a little success for that. Make the defense defend 53 and a third wide. Then it'll open up some of those running lanes for him. Gain of 15. I'll play action, far side screen. Pearson. Just a shoestring away from perhaps breaking that one for a long gain. Hayes got there at the right time. And that's, again, the exact type of throw that I'm talking about. No decision. Ball out quickly. Not even past the line of scrimmage. Let those wide receivers do some work again. 
make that defense start to widen out. Give him some running lanes. After a gain of five, Pigram gets a snap. Final play of the third. Off the pitch, Whittington ushered out short of the 30. But that'll be enough to move the change and a first down for Western Kentucky. 15 minutes to go here inside Cardinals Stadium. Mikhail Cunningham, Tim Hasselback getting the job done tonight. He sure is moving the pocket with him, using him as an option quarterback in today's option, and then just dropping dimes all over the field. First play the final quarter as Western Kentucky on first down handoff will pick up a yard important possession now for the Hilltoppers to try to work their way back in this one Tim it does and, you know they had you know they have something going here with this drive and sometimes when that you know when the quarter expires kind of take you out of the rhythm that you're in and so a bit of an unfortunate timing of it but I think, you know, here they are, probably four down territory. Coming away with a score here, obviously, be big for the Hilltoppers. Whittington, the running back, on second down and nine. Takes the handoff, has another Hilltopper first down. Into the red zone goes number 20 in white. And the freshman from Fort Valley, Georgia, the nice game. That's a good looking run there. Hit it hard. Good finish to the run. Good moves in the open field. It's well blocked. Well, power play. Pull the right to the left guard. You know, a lot of times you see a, a true freshman running back in that first action, kind of feeling their way around. Looks like Whittington starting to get comfortable. It's a gain of 15. Malik Staples checks in the backfield. There goes Piggy T. And straight ahead. On first down, we'll keep the drive moving. Another first down, it'll be first and goal after a gain of 10. Another quarterback draw, designed run with the tailback leading up as the lead blocker. And you can just see the way Pigram can hit it hard. He just gets there so fast. See, Staples just gonna lead up. He does a good job of covering up Etheridge and pretty good job of the offensive line. Get, kind of get that pass set, release down the field. Toppers in the chrome helmets. Floated back in the end zone. And looking for Mitchell Tinsley. Nothing doing. Bring up second down and goal. You know, I, I really feel watching Western Kentucky tonight offensively. You see there, they kind of packed it in. I, I just really think when you have a quarterback that's basically a punt returner when he takes off running with the football. Make the defense spread out. Give them, you know, give them room to just create offense. On second and goal, there goes Staples. Powers his way inside the five. Third down and goal upcoming. Clearly four down territory for Western Kentucky trailing by 21. Yeah, it most definitely is. And kind of another good example of a condensed formation. Louisville brings Chandler Jones off the corner, which allows the outside linebacker to play the running back you know, on that zone read run. Chandler Jones is there for the quarterback. Getting stops critical is Louisville defense in the fourth quarter. Unbalanced line for Western Kentucky. Pigram under center. Back of the end zone and incomplete. Joshua Simon is tied in the intended target. That was really well. That was really well covered. As you see, Pigram come off the fakes, pushing the perimeter. It's well covered. Kind of tries to stop Simon. Probably needed to back shoulder him a little bit more on that corner route. You know, a lot of times on a corner, you throw to the back shoulder. Fourth and three. Chandler Jones, outstanding coverage. Hilltoppers need a touchdown here. Walker checks into the backfield. Pigram had a running lane, keeps the play alive. 
He'll buy some time and incomplete. That ball just went straight into the turf. Halfway through the end zone, Tim. Yeah, and a little bit like we saw earlier out of Tyrell Pigram. Does all the hard work. They're just not able to make the throw, but good job at this front. You see the, the D line for Louisville not trying to get past the quarterback. Tabarius Peterson falls off of him. You see the strength, and he's got a receiver wide open. Just not able to, to get the ball. Looked like that was Simon. Not able to get the ball to Simon as he's running to his right. Look, you're tired after you scramble all of that stuff, but that's the hard work. Then you just got to deliver the throw. Hilltoppers come up empty deep in Louisville territory. And D'Angelo Malone checks back in number 10 for Western Kentucky. He'll run his direction. We check in once again with Eric Wood. Eric, what do you have on D'Angelo Malone? Yeah, I was behind the bench when D'Angelo Malone came out of the game. He had to go into the tent to be evaluated. He took a big shot on the last drive. But great news for the Hilltoppers that the former Conference USA Defensive Player of the Year is back in the game. He has been effective all night for them, and they need him if they're going to climb back in this game. No question about it. It's interesting. You know, we asked Western Kentucky defensive coordinator Clayton White. Scouts had been by to see D'Angelo Malone this offseason. And his preseason camp got underway, and he said, you know, with COVID-19, no, they haven't because the restrictions are in place. It's impossible for that to occur. So a game like tonight facing a power five school like Louisville is going to be vital for his draftability looking ahead towards next April and May. It certainly will. And what he's put on tape already has everybody's attention. And some of the plays he's made tonight will continue to get attention. And it's been a nice battle with he and Renato Brown the new right tackle for Louisville. And really, when you think about it for Louisville offensively, you lose two tackles to the National Football League. You know, I know Eric brought it up earlier, tested early in the season and done a pretty good job tonight. Quarterback draw, Cunningham takes off, stop short. And D'Angelo Malone on cue. Another tackle after a gain of four. The three and out for the Cards offense. That's two plays in a row where he was going to use as a spy. And, you know, with the, the way football is going, with, you know, so many quarterbacks that can really hurt you with your legs, and, you know, a, a starting defense is now typically a nickel defense. You know, guys like Malone are valuable. Logan Lupo back on the field. Four yards deep in his own end zone. Dayton Wade back deep to receive. Penalty flag delay of game coming against the Cards. Play game. Offense. Five yard penalty. Fourth down. We're not going to pin that one on Lupo. Okay. Yeah, but but the punt team in general, the there's going to be some up-downs and some there other things going on. Definitely going to be some up-downs. In fact, if Scott Satterfield doesn't up-down them, that, then I think somebody else needs to step in. Well, Scott Satterfield may take responsibility here. He oh, okay. may be doing the up-downs for the special teams unit. Look, we've seen this across college football today. It's been an issue. Punt was Ma. Who jumped on it? Hilltoppers holding on for dear life. Trying to hang around in this football game. Wade took his eye off the ball for just a moment. And Hilltoppers maintain possession. 10-16 to go. Here inside Cardinals Stadium, the league is 21. Let's take a look at our Bojangles big bow moment from tonight's game. Mikhail Cunningham, Des Fitzpatrick, one of the most underrated players in the ACC. Yeah, I completely agree with that. He's been fantastic tonight. Balls in the air, basically steals an interception and then takes it to the house. What a night for Des Fitzpatrick. So after Wade recovered his own fumble, Pigram gets it back, fires that pass high and out of bounds. 
Well, it feels like Western Kentucky has just been that one play away from really trying to get back in this one in the second half. And certainly, Hilltoppers have had their moments. First and goal from the five on their last possession, unable to push it across the goal line. They do that there. This possession really has a vastly different feel to it. Gage Walker barrels ahead. He'll be stopped at the 33. Gain of four. You mentioned it on the last drive, Roy, but I mean, there's four down territory here, especially where they are right now. So I think with that in mind, it should have an influence on the play call here. And so, you know, that, that designed quarterback draw, not a bad idea. Something where you just spin it out to the perimeter on a wide receiver screen. It's tight end Joshua Simon lines up in the slot. Pearson outside of him. Pickram takes off and there he goes. First down Western Kentucky as he stopped at the 20 yard line by Pago. Well, it, it, it was quarterback run, designed quarterback run. Basically, you know, quarterback counter or power, or however you want to do it, pulling back both backside uh, tackle and guard, leading up into the hole, and, you know, let your quarterback that runs like a running back get up into the hole. Well, if I'm Brian Ellis, play caller, Western Kentucky's offense, I think I'm pressing that X button again. Just call the same play. See if it can generate a similar result. Pigram and his speed on display on occasion tonight. That's what they'll do. He'll take off again. We asked Tyrell Pigram if you had one word to describe yourself, what would it be? And honestly, he looked at all three of us, you, me, and Eric Wood. And it took about 30 seconds to get there, but finally he said, electric. I'm electric. <laughs> and I think he's got to be electric right now for Western Kentucky to have a chance to come back here. Yeah, you're right, he does. And you know, Ty Helton running him right now, which I think is the right thing to do to kind of get him going. Weddington stacked up. He'll lose a couple of yards to bring up third down. C.J. Avery, Dorian Etheridge, two leaders of this defense. Yeah, and this defense that wants to be talked about the way the offense is talked about, you know, playing well tonight, continuing to play well, you know, when it matters most in the fourth quarter, when you're tired, pursuing to the football. You look at Etheridge there. You know, he's been all over the field tonight, continuing to pursue with relentless energy. How about the bill defensively? Ten TFLs. That's certainly something put a smile on Scott Satterfield's face to get the defense making that kind of play, those kinds of plays behind the line. Bigger will take off with an alley. Close to a first down. Needed to cross the 10 yard line. They'll bring up fourth and short. Yeah, basically the same play that they ran on third down. You see with the left guard kind of wrap around. Just get enough movement position. It's a little pig run. I mean, you look at him, they've been running him on this drive that typically affects your accuracy. Got to call number one's number here. You have to think. Battering ram. Nick Staples in the backfield joins him. And it is Pickering. And he's got the first down. So under seven to play. Western Kentucky still with an opportunity. Yeah, and this is, I think, the best fit for his game. I mean, it's. I mean, this has basically just been, you know, quarterback power running football. And it just, you know, you're adding to, I mean, you look at him, he's gas, but you're, you're, you're adding a, a, an extra block. You know, Staples can go ahead and lead up on Etheridge because your quarterback's the ball carrier. I think Avery got a good knock on him that time. Pigram kind of limped out of that last pile. And this time he's going to lose a couple of more. He was surrounded. See, the challenge with running the quarterback is exactly what we're seeing now. Name plates getting ripped off the back of his jersey. He's breathing heavy. He's run the ball in between the tackles about five times on this drive. That's the danger in running your quarterback so much because now, you know, in critical moments, he's gassed. Yaya Diaby with the sack to loss of four. Pegram floats it, 
Pass is caught. Tinsley has it, and he's got the touchdown. And Western Kentucky trying to creep back into this one. Extra point away from making it a 14-point affair on the road. That's a good job here by Pickram. When you look at him, he's kind of flat-footed. He nearly misses Tinsley as that ball is up high. But that Louisville defense got him spread out. Middle of the field, soft and open. And you're right about hanging in this. And I think that with what Louisville went through a year ago, you know, with how their defense has, you know, played, they have to be thinking on the sideline, no, we need to keep our foot on the gas, do things offensively, and then come up with stops. Hilltoppers, all three touchdowns coming with a short field. 35-21 our score. ACC Network Primetime Football is presented by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Second Street Bridge, beautiful look at downtown Louisville, the skyline here in the Commonwealth of Kentucky on a Saturday night. The ACC back in action this evening. And Louisville trying to close this one out, Tim Hasselbeck. They've got some work to do to try to do exactly that. They really do. You know, struggled on their last three drives offensively. And you just look at the second half. Western Kentucky's run 37 plays so far in this second half after running just 21 in all of the first half. Onside kick, and we wonder during the break if they would call it. It's recovered by the Hilltoppers. The question is, did it go 10 yards? Mitchell Tinsley, who just caught the touchdown pass, appeared to make the recovery, but the officiating crews behind the 45-yard line. Rolling on the field. Just the ball was illegally touched by the kicking team before it went 10 yards. It'll be the kick receiving team's ball, first down. Now Tensley tried to wait for it. Caught it at the nine. Louisville takes over, first down, coming up. ACC Network Primetime presented by Geico, a two-score affair between in-state rivals with Tim Hasselback, Roy Philpott, Eric Wood. And watch this on replay because this is a lot closer than what we originally thought. We were right in the sense that Tinsley waited to corral the football. He definitely waited. He knew he was trying to get it to go 10 yards. And after the illegal touching call, Louisville gets possession at the 44. Hawkins. Driven backwards, he's going to lose two yards. D'Angelo Malone, who's had a big night, got there first. Yeah, it's remarkable. Malone's ability to play the run at 228 pounds. You know, battling with 330-pound right tackles or a 310-pound left tackle. Just so wiry, he's able to, to kind of slip blockers and find his way to the football. Six stops tonight, a sack, forced fumble. Play action for Cunningham, tries to get to the edge and then steps out right at the line of scrimmage. So the clock is going to stop. Western Kentucky has two timeouts remaining. He's going to lose a yard. And D'Angelo Malone applying pressure once again. Yeah, and that play was kind of a disaster from the beginning. Play action moved the pocket again. And Atwell, who they're going to drag across the formation into the flat, just gets caught up in the wash. Tyson Helton told us this week, we want to have a chance to win this game with five minutes left. I don't know that they're there just yet, but a stop here certainly. Ball start. Offense, number 11. Five yard penalty. It would make things interesting. And Josh Johnson back him up five more. Don't forget, coming up next week, triple header here on ACC Network. Syracuse Pittsburgh. Kicks things off at noon, followed by the Citadel against number one Clemson. Tigers rolling tonight on the road in Winston-Salem. That'll be the home opener in Death Valley. Then Wake Forest and NC State. ACC Network primetime football presented by Geico once again at 8 p.m. Eastern next Saturday. College football is back. The ACC leading the charge here in 2020.
So after the penalty. It's called offsides. It's Western Kentucky. Third down and manageable. Cunningham retreats. Fires complete. And in the plus territory. Boy, he bought some time. Reception made by Justin Marshall. That'll be his first of the night for number 18. And this is playing quarterback here. You just see the way that he able, you know, a little bit of drift. Normally guys that can take off and run, they don't do those subtle, you know, those subtle Tom Brady, Drew Brees moves in the pocket. You see that there, just drift, give a little ground, buy yourself a little time. So as that curl is, is needing a little more time to develop, you have time to get the football off. That's really well done. How great has he been tonight on third down and long? I mean, he has made all the right decisions time after time on these scoring drives. He's been fantastic. And in a conference where we talk about, you know, Trevor Lawrence and Sam Howell, and we're going to talk about De'Ara King and all these guys, you know, Mikhail Cunningham, who battled through injuries last year and still had a really good year, and Scott Satterfield has praised his work ethic, his accuracy. He's been outstanding. Almost 350 yards through the air. 21 more on the ground. Hawkins tries to pop it outside. He'll pick up the first down at the 14-yard line. Cunningham also has accounted for four touchdowns tonight. So I'll ask you this. You mentioned Howell and Lawrence. Most people speculate that Trevor Lawrence is going to be the first pick in the draft next year. I don't even know if that's called speculation at this point. Howell's probably going to the NFL. What about a guy like number three for the Cards? Oh, I think there's potential there for sure. I mean, he's we're talking to Manny Diaz about Derek King and is he a passer, is he a runner, all that stuff. He basically said he's the modern quarterback. And I think there's elements of what Mikhail Cunningham is doing that prove that he would be the modern quarterback as well. Off the pump fake. There's that pass towards the pylon and out of bounds. We take a look at our Geico players spotlight. Who else? He's flexing for the camera. Almost 350 yards through the air. Four total touchdowns. He's been impressive. He's been really impressive. And, you know, you get this type of production out of your quarterback. Kind of consistency. You know, he had... Had a bad interception. It was a fourth down kind of force. He maybe got fortunate with one early to Braden Smith, but I feel like he's seeing it well. He's playing on time. When he takes off and runs, he's he's really dangerous. And I think he's only going to improve. Remember, this is just year two in this offense. And now that he's healthy, it certainly makes a big difference. A couple of nice cuts. And a quality pickup on second and long. <laughs> it's a quality pickup. That was a really good run. You saw the patience he, and you know, just the trust and understanding of what his offensive line is doing. Kind of continue on his path there. Like that's a run. We haven't seen a run like that out of him tonight. And you know, then you throw in these design runs like that. My, now, my only fear with those would be his health. You know, last year playing with the knee brace, I don't think he moved quite as well. And so. I'd want to keep him healthy. Told us this week he worked out with Henry Ruggs, the Alabama speedster during quarantine. Try to keep his skill set sharp. I'd say that's worked out fairly well. He, he wouldn't tell us who was faster, though, between Tutu and, and Ruggs. Have you seen Ruggs in person? He's, he, he's pretty quick. <laughs> I mean, it's world-class speed, I think, for, for both of those guys. How about Louisville going to try to salt this one away? On offense, just chewing up the clock. Gets a team that many people had predicted to win Conference USA this year. Hilltoppers won nine games last season. And Scott Satterfield telling us of Cunningham, you know, he really started to see the light in this offense. The practices leading up to the bowl win against Mississippi State. That's going to be a late hit out of bounds. Flags come in flying. So it'll be first and goal, but see that's where I'd be careful. You know, this situation of the game, running him. After the player is out of bounds, dead ball, personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 29 defense. 
Beanie Bishop. Distance to the goal. First down. But you go back to the bowl win against Mississippi State. One more look at the play, and Cunningham got up pretty quickly. He gets yeah. shoved out. Hey, listen, it's a late hit. He goes, gets thrown into the gate there. That could have been absolutely disastrous, and, that, and that's why I was saying. I, I think you, know, you asked me earlier, when does he come out of the game? He doesn't come out of the game, but I, I would be very, very careful. You know, I, I'm handing the ball off to Hawkins, I'm taking a knee, I'm doing something that doesn't get my quarterback hurt. Stop at the line of scrimmage. Don't forget, as soon as we're done here in the Derby City, the huddle. Jordan Cornette, Coach Mark Rick, Eric McLean, EJ Manuel. Break down all the action. The ACC today, Notre Dame picks up its first ever conference victory. That came at home against Duke. Tar Heels find a way at home. We'll get things going in the second half against Syracuse and Clemson rolling right now at Wake Forest. Interesting game coming up next week. Louisville and Miami. Chris Fowler, Kirk Herbstreit will be on the call for that one. A lot of eyes on Mikhail Cunningham and this Louisville team. What will be the final play of the night. 35-21 the final score for our marathon conference kickoff. Two touchdown win. The defense played pretty well. Tim Hasselbeck and the offense was certainly in gear for the first three quarters today. Yeah, Scott Satterfield has to be happy with his week one performance out of his team. So much uncertainty about where they're going to be playing this year. When were they going to be playing? Who would they be playing? And I think for his group to come out like this, play the way they did defensively, have the offense get the big plays that they, they got. I think other than that punt team, he's going to be pretty happy with his unit. Mikhail Cunningham, 343 yards through the air. That's a new career high, counting for four touchdowns tonight. The red shirt junior from Montgomery, Alabama. A strong start to his 2020 season. Cards haven't lost to Western Kentucky since 1975. Their in-state rival exits a 35-21 loser tonight. Defense was solid. Offense got the job done. And Mikhail Cunningham finding a way. Don't forget, coming up right now, the huddle. Jordan Cornette and company. Tim Hasselback and Eric Wood. I'm Roy Philpine saying good night from Louisville, Kentucky.